Good evening, everyone. I know everybody here at church this evening knows Father Muldoon, but for those who are watching us on our live stream this evening, we introduce Father Ryan Muldoon to you, priest of the Archdiocese of New York, currently serving as parochial vicar at St. Patrick's in Yorktown Heights, happens to be my partner in crime and being the spiritual director for Credo, member of the class of 2019, and a dear friend to us and a dear friend to me. So Father Muldoon, welcome to St. Augustine's. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. Look with favor, Lord God, on our petitions, and in our trials grant us your compassionate help that, consoled by the presence of your Son, whose coming we now await, we may be tainted no longer by the corruption of former ways. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On that day, a shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse, and from his roots a bud shall blossom. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and of understanding, a spirit of counsel and of strength, a spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be the fear of the Lord. Not by appearance shall he judge, nor by hearsay shall he decide, but he shall judge the poor with justice and decide aright for the lands afflicted. He shall strike the ruthless with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Justice shall be the band around his waist, and faithfulness a belt upon his hips. Then the wolf shall be a guest of the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the young lion shall browse together with a little child to guide them. The cow and the bear shall be neighbors. Together their young shall rest. The lion shall eat hay like the ox. The baby shall play by the cobra's den, and the child lay his hand on the adder's lair. There shall be no harm or ruin on all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be filled with knowledge of the Lord as water covers the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse, set up as a signal for the nations, the Gentiles shall seek out, for his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. Justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. 
O God, with your judgment endow the King, and with your justice the King's Son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. Justice shall flower in his days, and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. He shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted one when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor, The lives of the poor he shall save. Justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. May his name be blessed forever. As long as the sun, his name shall remain. In him shall all the tribes of the earth be blessed. All the nations shall proclaim his happiness. Justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Behold, our Lord shall come with power. He will enlighten the eyes of his servants. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I give you praise, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. For although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father and who is the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Turning to the disciples in private, he said, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see, For I say to you, many kings and prophets desire to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. All through the Bible, seeing, that is vision, is connected with blessing. Hence the fact that Jesus says in our gospel this evening to his closest disciples, blessed are your eyes. Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For many prophets and kings desired to see what you see, but did not see it. To see is to be blessed and to have a certain responsibility for the vision that one has been given. Advent reminds each one of us as followers of Christ that we are privileged visionaries. 
Each one of us is a privileged visionary, for we have seen in our own time the things that the prophet Isaiah could only dream of. We have seen that indeed one did come from the stump of Jesse, that is, one did come from the people of Israel, and from this root came the stem, which is Mary, and came the flower that blossomed, Jesus Christ. We have seen that indeed the Spirit of the Lord would rest on the one who was to come, would rest on the Christ. And it's that same Holy Spirit that has come to rest upon you and upon me in baptism and in confirmation with the same gifts that we heard through the words of Isaiah tonight wisdom and understanding, counsel and fortitude, knowledge and fear of the Lord, and piety, the sevenfold gifts of the Spirit, certainly upon the one who was to come, but given also to you and to me who have seen him in the flesh. We've seen the coming of the Christ, the one who would not judge by appearances and hearsay, Thank God. That's as the world judges, by appearances and by hearsay. But our Lord knows the things of the heart, and he judges with justice and with faithfulness. We have already seen the vision of peace that Isaiah only dreamt of. The baby shall play by the cobra's den. The cobra was associated with Egypt. And indeed, the baby of the Holy Family flees to Egypt and there begins to grow, the baby playing by the cobra's den. And the child laid his hand on the adder's lair. I don't know much about first century stables, but I imagine there would have been a snake or two. And so indeed, the child God laid his hand on the adder's lair and there slept in the peace of the manger. We are privileged visionaries of Christ's first coming in the flesh. But you and I, we need Advent because we often live as if the coming of Christ never happened. We often live as if we were given no vision at all, right? Adam and Eve, they broke this perfect relationship between God and man. But Christ, as he took on flesh, he restored that relationship. But so often in our day-to-day lives, we live as if that relationship were still irreparably broken. Advent gives us an opportunity to reorder our vision. Just as Christ says to the disciples, he so says to us in Advent, blessed are your eyes. Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. The eyes, through faith, that see Christ's first coming in the the flesh at Christmas. The same eyes that look for him as he comes again this Christmas. But Advent reorders our vision as well as we prepare for the sight of that second and that more glorious coming of Christ when total peace Total peace that has eluded us in this world because of sin. Total peace will, please God, be ours in the heavenly kingdom. And we'll see the rest of Isaiah's vision. When the wolf shall be a guest of the lamb, and the leopard lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion browse together with a child to guide them. The cow and the bear shall be neighbors, Together their young shall rest. As we await the Lord's coming in glory, he gives us this advent to reorder our vision. Christ came in the flesh to heal that divide between God and man. So many in our world, our peers, our contemporaries, so many have failed to recognize Christ in his first coming. But we who bear the name of Christian Proclaim that we have seen him. We have seen him. 
And as ones who have seen his first coming, we wait to see his second coming in glory. We who bear the name of Christian, we proclaim that we spend this life, not just in Advent, but our whole life waiting for something, waiting for someone who gives meaning to our existence here and now. In order to help reorient our vision this Advent, the invisible Lord of glory, he makes himself visible to us in the Eucharist tonight. As we receive his body and his blood, may we count ourselves among those blessed to see what we see. Jesus Christ in our midst, Emmanuel, God with us. We now bring our needs to our loving Father with confidence and trust. For Pope Francis, may the Lord look graciously upon his every need and continue to prosper him in holiness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders and local representatives, may the Spirit of the Lord lead them in their decision-making, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the elderly and the homebound, may the Lord fill them with his presence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our young adult community, may the Lord strengthen us in building God's kingdom on earth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in the light of faith, may they soon be welcomed home to our loving God, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Heavenly Father, giver of every perfect gift, we ask that you would hear our prayers and answer them according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy name. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, He took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God. 
blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Augustine, St. Patrick, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to, wi- to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we conclude this evening, Father Ryan, Thank you very much for your words this evening, for your homily, thought-provoking and wise words as we go forth in this season of Advent. And I can speak on a personal level. I'm blessed to share this duty of running Credo with you. So thank you very much for being here with us this evening. And always thank you for being a great friend and a brother priest. Appreciate all of that. To everyone who helped to put tonight together, those who are here with us in the church and those who are watching, be a live stream. Thank you very much. Just a reminder to keep in touch with the social media programs to see what's going on in the days and weeks ahead. Um, it's difficult times as we go through things right now with all these new numbers and everything else that is going on, but we're trying to keep everything as clean and as possible, as uh, regular as we can. So we thank you for your patience. We thank you for your understanding. And most importantly, we thank you for your prayers. Let us continue to pray for one another in this season of Advent as we go forth from this place. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. So that, rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Go forth, the Mass is ended. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Sanctum Genitum